This is a level one functions just math paper from City and Girls. Part A, where you can't use a calculator. So you should have the following, a pen with black or blue ink, a pencil, an eraser, a 30 centimeter ruler, a protector as well. You should read through each question carefully, write all the answers in the booklet, check your calculations and check that your answers make sense. You must hand this section in before you can pick up your calculator to begin section two, which is part B, where you can actually use a calculator. So we'll have a look at each question together in turn, showing the working out as we go along. So we've got this first question, which is asking us to work out four at three times two. So we know that we should do multiplication before we do addition. So we'll rewrite this as four plus three dots of two is six. So four at six gives us 10. Now we need to work out 25 squared. Squared means multiplying the number by itself. So 25 times 25. Five lots of five is 25. So five down and two carried over. Five lots of two is 10 and the two makes 12. Now we put a zero down. So two lots of five is 10 and one carried over. So two times two is four and the one is five. So we add these 625. Looking at the next question, what is two fifths as a decimal? Now there are many ways you could do this. You could do two divided by five because that line in the middle means division. Or you could do more visual method, which is what I'm going to use now. So imagine this being a one pound coin. And I'm going to split this into five equal parts. So if I share one pound into five equal parts, how much would each part be worth? It would be 20 pence. And we write 20 pence like this. So this is saying two out of five. So 20 pence here and another 20 pence. That makes 40 pence. which. I write as this. So this would be 0 0.4 as a decimal. You could also write it as 0 0.40 because it means exactly the same thing. Fours don't include the pound sign because we're not talking about money here. I just use it to illustrate. So we've got the next question, which is negative 12 add 13. Again, there are many methods you could use here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a context and that is again money. So if your bank account shows this, so your 12 pounds overdraft, and then you add 13 pounds to that same account, what's going to happen? So the first 12 pounds of the 13 so 12 and 1 makes 13. They will go to cover the overdraft. So this and this will bring the balance to zero. So what is left then is just this one pound. So in between these four options, A, B, C and D, this would be the correct answer. In question number five, we've got 60% of 300 grams is 18 grams, 50 grams, 180 grams, 200 grams. We've got to find the correct answer. We use many different methods to work out the percentage, but since this is a non-calculator paper, I'll go and 
split the 60% into 50% and 10%. So 50% of 300 is half of it, which is 150 grams. Now 10%. If you know what 10% means, it's quite straightforward. So if this is 100%, the whole thing, then one of these out of 10 would be 10%. So it means the whole amount would be divided into 10 equal parts and you take just one. So if this whole thing is 100% which is also the same as 300 grams, I'm going to have to divide 300 by 10 to just get one of these slices. So 300 divided by 10 is 30. So this is 30, this is 30, 30 and so on. If you add them up it should give you 300. So what happened? I just knocked off a zero to get the 10%. That's only when you have the number ending in zero, otherwise you move the decimal. So we know that 10% is equal to 30 grams. So 60% is adding these two amounts together. So it's 180 grams, option C. We've got now to work out the range of these numbers. So range means taking away the smallest number from the highest. It's like when you go to a shop and it has a range of prices, it means it has quite low as well as quite high prices. So you're finding the range between them. So looking at the numbers, the highest value seems to be 180 and the lowest value seems to be 95, either this one or that one, it does not really matter that we have to. So we'll do 180, take away 95. So 0, take away 5, we can't do without going to, into the negative, so we'll borrow 1 from the 8 to make it 7, and this becomes a 10. So 10, take away 5, gives us 5. 7, again, take away 9, we'll need to borrow 1 from here. So this becomes 17, take away 9 gives us 8, so 85 is the range. A man puts £3,000 into a savings account. The interest rate is 5% per year. How much will the interest be for the first year? Previous percentage question, I'll work out 10% of 3000 so we knock off a zero, which makes this 300. 5% is half of it, because 5 is half of 10. So this is equal to 150. We worked with pounds, so this is 150 pounds. This scale shows the probability that something will happen. What probability does the scale show? So we're looking for this mark here. So we know that zero means impossible. One is certain. And we have this one here, which is closer to zero than to one. So that is unlikely about 25% the probability, whereas this one is closer to the one, which is 100% here, so this is about 75%, so this is likely. So chances of it happening are greater than it not happening. What's the volume of this cube? 
So it's a cube and we know that this is 10 centimeters, this is 10 centimeters and this is 10 centimeters, the three dimensions that we want, length, width and height or depth. So we know that we work out volume by multiplying the three dimensions. So this is going to be 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1000. So multiplying by 10, in this case, adds a zero. Five and two fifths is the same as how many fifths? Again, there are different methods you could use here, but I'll try and represent visually to help you remember. So it's five whole pizzas or cakes, and we've got two fifths. This is not whole, it's just two out of five. Now we've got to represent it out of five. So we've got to imagine that these are split into five equal parts as well. So there are five fifths in here, five in this one, five in that, five in that, because we're talking about the whole pizza or cake. So we've got 5 and 5 and 5 and 5 and 5, which makes 25. And we've got only 2 in this last one. So that makes 27. So 27 fifths. A quick way if you know this, you'd have been to multiply 5 by 5 and then add 2. Question number 11. We've got a customer wants to buy a coat in the sale in a clothes shop. He has £30. We've got a sale for old coats reduced to 70%. So reduced to, not buy. So you're going to pay 70%. The customer will pay 70%, not 30 So the question is, can the customer afford to buy the coat? So there are absolutely many different ways we could do this. We could work out the 30% and take it away from 45. We could go and work out 70% of the amount and see whether that is 30 pounds or not. We could do something else like he's got, th he or she's got 30 pounds. And that is 30 out of the 45. So we're trying to work out whether that 30 is 70% of 45. If it is, then he's got the money. If it's greater than 70%, that means he's got the money and some extra as well. If this 30 is less than 70%, like 60%, for example, that means he hasn't got enough money. That's not enough to cover the 70%. So 30 out of 45. Now, that's a good number because if we imagine 45, we'd have 15 and 15 and 15. So it's two thirds. Now, if this is 100%, two thirds is going to be 66.6%. It's recurring 666. So the customer hasn't got the 70% that they need. They've only got 66.7%. So the answer is no. Right, a sandwich shop owner makes one sandwich with brown bread for every four sandwiches he makes with white bread. So I'm gonna try and represent this for every one sandwich that is made with brown bread is going to make with white bread. So I'm going to color this in brown to mean the brown 
red and these are the four we mean the white red so he's going to make 600 sandwiches all together Six hundred sandwiches. So, if this is the whole thing is equal to six hundred, what will one part out of this five equal parts will be equal to? So, we're going to have to divide six hundred by five. How many fives fit into six? There is one, and we have one left after we take away five. How many fives into ten? That would be two. And there is nothing left. How many fives into zero? There would be zero of them. So it's 120 sandwiches. So we can check our answer quickly. 120 times 5. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 1 is 5. And the 1 is 6. So it totals 600, so 120 sandwiches will be made with brown red. Question number 13. John is a checkout assistant in a supermarket. There are five tills and five assistants. The supervisor allocates the tills to the assistants randomly at the start of each day. No one likes the till next to the door. What is the probability that John will get the tail next to the door today? Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So it's about the tail next to the door. How many tails are there which are next to the door? There is just one. How many are there in total? Five. So one fifth is the probability of John getting the tail next to the door today. A van has a fuel tank that holds 60 litres when full. The diagram shows the fuel gauge on the van. Approximately how many litres of fuel are left in the tank? Give your answer in whole litres. So when empty, that would be zero litres, full 60 litres. Halfway through, that would be 30. Half of 30 would be 15. So we only asked to work out an approximate answer. So roughly, and that is roughly 15 litres. This is the end of the questions for this paper. It's always a good idea to go back to your answers and check them again when you're finished.